Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. This is day four of our Texas Instruments IoT week, and what that means is we're going to add fan control to our ever evolving IoT node. So far, we've selected the CC3200 with Wi Fi as our launch pad host. We have a TMP275 temperature sensor connected via I2C to the launch pad, and we have the Sharp 96 LCD display plugged into the top of the launch pad so that we can see locally what is being read and a few other useful bits of information. What we're going to do today is we're going to add a driver and a fan to the system and add additional code to the sketch on, on Anagia so that we can measure the temperature, compare it to some preset values and depending on whether it's above or below these values we will turn the fan on and off. We will also add a small status indication on the LCD display so that even if you're not near the fan you can see what is supposed to be going on. Now the thing to remember here though is the CC3200 is a 3.3 volt launch pad. It's not 5 volt and, and also the GPIO pins are not capable of driving large loads. Uh, only a few milliamps out at the 3.3 volts, so we need some kind of buffer driver to drive a relay, which will then turn on and off the fan, which is going to be a 12 volt uh, blower that I have. So what I'm going to use for that is simply a 10K resistor, a Jelly Bean 2N2222, just a straightforward NPN transistor, and we've got a little 5 volt relay, which I'm just borrowing from a sub board which we're just going to plug in so the relay is going to be isolated from the launch pad and the transistor is going to be what drives the relay we're going to put a schematic right here so that you can see what we're talking about or what i'm talking about let's go have a look at the bench to see what um, we're going to end up going through and see it operating and then we'll go to the pc and i will walk you through the code and how it works Okay, so here's a close-up look of what we're going to end up with. Well, actually, this has already ended up there. Uh, what we have, I've just got a DMM measuring the output of the launch pad, just so you can see what the voltage levels are. We have a 12-volt blower fan. I'm borrowing uh, 12 volts from my breadboard here, because I have a multi-supply built into it, so I'm just pinching 12 volts from that uh, via this little connector here, and it's going through this relay board here. This is um, from a Pi Face Digital. It's just a little relay extender board. It's just got four uh, little five volt low power relays on here that are capable of driving 20, 30 volts at up to about an amp on the output. Um, so I've just used that to drive the and switch the 12 volts going into this fan. The output from the launch pad right here um, is coming up to here and I'm going to include some close-up pictures um, right about now. So I have a control signal coming up from the launch pad which is this brown wire. It then goes in through a 10k resistor to the base of the transistor. The emitter is going to ground, that's this blue wire, and the black wire is also connecting to ground. Um, the blue wire is going to the ground of the relay board and I've got the red wire from the relay board going to the 5 volts of the launch pad and that pretty much is it so if the output of the launch pad the GPIO pin goes high then it'll turn the transistor on and the normally open contacts of the relay would now be closed turning on the fan so that's the uh, basic what it's going to do and I'll quickly show you this working right now and then we're going to go look at the code so I put my finger on the temperature sensor you can see here I hope that it's creeping up and it's just gone up over 28 degrees and now if I take my hand away the fan is actually blowing over the temperature sensor it's cooling down again and now it's gone back off because it's gone below the threshold what I've done is I've set 27 degrees and 28 degrees as the high and low point at the moment because the labs are a little bit warm and it will go below that and it's easy to put my finger on the temperature sensor have it go up above 28 degrees to turn the fan on and then take it off and let the fan just quickly cool it down below 27 again where it turns off. And what I've also got now is I've got the time here in milliseconds uh, that have elapsed since I powered this up. And then there's a status indicator down here. So you can see here I've got the off on indicator down here. So if I just heat the temperature up again you'll see the temperature come up. And this will change to say on. Right there. You can hear it come on as well. 
Now it's on and now it's cooled down and it's going to come off again. Before we go look at the code, there's just a couple of things I want to point out. One of them is the pinout designations for the CC3200 and probably other launch pads as well. It is not quite as it, is seen, uh, as it seems in this diagram. Uh, I've updated it to reflect the physical pinouts of the CC3200 board. Let me just go and bring up the original document first to show you. So this is the diagram that's actually in the CC3200 user's guide. And if you look at this, there's two rows, P1, P3, on each side, and then you've got P4 and P2 on the other side. Now, with the traditional um, lower-end launch pads, there's only one row of 10 pins on each side. And normally, numbering convention goes sort of from top to bottom, 1 to 10, and then you go 11 up here and down to 20 at the bottom. And when you look at this reference, it kind of gives you an indication of that's what it's doing as well, because it's labeled 1 to 10 and then another 1 to 10 here. It really doesn't tell you any designation for the inner ones. It's just telling you what pin it is on the actual CC3200, which really doesn't help you in using the launch pad. And the problem is that it actually doesn't work that way either. In order to keep the single row launch pads and the dual row launch pads somewhat compatible with the numbering convention, they keep the outer two rows of the pin, so the outer side on this end and this end, numbered the same way. But they don't go top to bottom, top to bottom. They go top to bottom, across, bottom to top. So if you go back to my diagram, what I've done is I've corrected this. This is pin 1 to pin 10. You come across here, it's pin 11 to pin 20. And when you're coding and you're actually making references to pins, these are the designations you need to use if you're going to directly reference the pin rather than, you know, A0, A5 or something like that. And then it, once you get to 20, you come back across to the left-hand side and you then come down the inner connector, 21 through 30. You go back across the right-hand side and then up from bottom to top, up back up to 40. Now, if you've got a launch pad that has the double set of booster headers, then it's the same thing but extended yet again onto the second set. So it will be 41 across to um, 51, 61, 71, and ending with 80. Um, it threw me a little bit when I was actually trying to pick a pin for using uh, the fan control, and it suddenly dawned on me that I've come across this before and I'd just forgotten about it. So I thought I would share this diagram that I just put together in order to help you understand it. And if TI is listening, maybe they need to uh, update the manuals and have a diagram like this in them. If I actually look at the sharp display, you'll see here that they actually have it correct for the outer one. See, it's labeled pin 1 to 10, 11 to 20. So this is correct. So they've done it, some of them they've done correctly. But as I said, in the original one, it wasn't quite right. Now, if I go to the design your own booster pack page as well, you can see here that they also show it correctly. So you've got J1, pin 1 at the top to the bottom, and then J2, pin 11 at the bottom, up to 20 at the top. J3, 21 at the top, 30 at the bottom, and etc. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at the schematic for this. We've already um, seen this in the previous video, or part of it, where um, I've added the sharp display just to explain how we've connected this to it, even though it just plugs in the top. We've got the TMP275 that plugs into the CC3200 via um, flying leads. And what we're going to add is this circuit down the bottom here. So we're taking 5 volts from the CC3200 and we're feeding into a very low powered relay. A lot of relays take too much power to be drawing them from a uh, launch pad, Arduino, whatever. In this case, these are very, very low power relays and they, can't, uh, they only take a few milliamps. But because the output, the GPIO outputs of this is only 3.3 volts, that's not enough to directly drive the relay. So we're putting a little 2N2222 in to buffer it a little bit and give it a bit more current capacity. We're just using it as a switch. So when pin 17 goes high, it turns the transistor on, and then we get 5 volts going through the relay, turning that on. When that turns on, its contact will close. That will apply 12 volts through the contacts to the fan motor, and then obviously that will go back to the 12 volts supply. Now, this 12-volt supply is completely isolated from anything that's going on over here. And if you had a suitable 
approved relay, then this could be mains on this side controlling some high-powered fan and everything else, uh, or some lighting or whatever else you might, a uh, water heater, whatever it might be. In this case, I'm just doing 12 volts to keep it safe because I don't know all of the audience that I'm using. And if you know how to interface to mains and things like that using relays, and you can do it safely, then that's up to you. I'm not going to include it in this video. I'm just going to use nice, safe 12 volts to keep everybody in a comfort zone so they don't have to worry about it. And that's pretty much it. The only thing we've got to make sure is that we also have a ground reference to the emitter of the transistor because we are using the 5 volts from the CC3200. So the current does need to get back to the CC3200 as well as the output current driving the transistor needs to be able to get back to the CC3200 as well. Um, the common ground for the CC3200 does not need to be connected to the ground of the 12 volts. And you probably shouldn't because what happens if you do is that the noise from the fan and various other things that might be out here, depending on what load you connect, could actually backfeed and cause interference on the controller as well. Okay, so now you know what we're going, what we've hooked up. You've already seen a picture of it running. I'm going to now show you the code. So let's go to that. So this is the code that we are going to use. This is for day four. And I've added additional code in here for the fan. Now I'm not going to, again, review all of the code that we've used uh, in the previous days. If you haven't seen that, just go and have a watch of that and come back to this one. So what have we added here? We've got a set of fan variables been added. We've got a constant fan pin 17, which defines the pin that we're going to use to drive our transistor and subsequently the relay and then the fan. We have a couple of constants that allow our code to just look a little prettier for high and for low. The high and low relates to the GPIO pin. If you're using an Arduino or energy in the past, you'll know what that really means. It's just a logical zero and one sort of thing. But I'm using a constant here so that if uh, you have a situation where turning something on is actually low, you can just change this and your code will automatically reflect that. Um, I've set two temperatures for thresholds. I've got a fan temperature on with 28.00. So that's a double value that if the temperature exceeds 28 degrees, it will turn the GPIO output on and turn the fan on. On the opposite direction, if the temperature falls below 27, it will turn the fan off. Now, you can change these parameters to whatever you like, of course. Um, I'm just using 28 and 27 in this example because it makes it easy for me to demonstrate what's happening. Normally, you'd probably have this maybe four or five degrees further below the on temperature, so just so it's not hunting too much. And we have a fan state Boolean, which is used to indicate whether the fan is currently turned on and off. And that just helps with the flow logic further down. So let's go down here and see what else we've added. So in the setup routine, we've added it a knit fan. This is following the same um, process as I've done before. For each device we've added, I've kept the functionality out of these basic two routines. So I've added a function called init fan that's going to initialize the fan, GPIO, etc. I've added a routine in loop called update fan. Now, if we come down here and we look at the fan functions, all I've added is these two things. Init fan sets the pin mode, fan pin, to, the, to an output, and then it sets it to fan power off. So we're starting right out of the gate with the fan off. We don't want it to turn on without any good reason. The second routine, which is repeatedly called through the update fan. So as we come in here, first of all, we look to see if the fan is on. If the fan is already on, we look to see if the off temperature is greater than the temp C. Or if you flip that around, the temperature that we're reading is less than the off temperature that we've set. And if it is, we drop into digital write, turn the fan off. We write off to the bottom right corner of our LCD display. We change the, the Boolean state to say that the fan's off. That way, the next time we come through here, it's just going to say, is the fan on? Nope. Okay, just drop out. The second routine here simply says, if the fan state is off, then is our temperature greater than the on temperature? And if it is, turn the fan on set on on the display and set the state to true. Now you can have a simple if fan state equals true else here if you like. I've just done it this way just so that it's easier to explain to any um, 
beginners in programming and everything else. Obviously, if you're a little more advanced, you would just try and optimize this code a little bit more. And now we have complete ability to, to turn the fan on and off depending on what the temperature is. And the nice thing about this is that what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to turn on the Wi-Fi and make this whole IoT project connect to the cloud. We're going to use an MQTT server. We're going to introduce Node-RED so that you can have it on a little smart device and see what's happening. And using the Node-RED capabilities and the smartphone with its little interface, we're going to be able to send a signal back to the CC3200 and actually adjust the high and low thresholds of the fan on and off areas. We're just going to use a slider control for that, but that's for tomorrow, not today. Um, so you can look forward to being able to do that. And this, this will then become a true IoT device. So I think that completes the video for today. Um, we've got everything done now. There's, I don't think there's really anything else to explain. Of course, if you've got any questions, just post them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, I'd like to just take the opportunity to thank Texas Instruments for uh, sponsoring me with this project and helping out with a bit of the social media uh, to spread the word and also for uh, providing some of the components that I'm using in this project like the launch pad and some of the temperature sensors and things like that. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and subscribe if you like it and you want to see more and be automatically notified and I will see you tomorrow.